and uh, when your stomach is in bad shape, so is your head, so is your, it's like everything hurts. Everything is just um, unsettled. And, um, but I'm, I'm gracious unto God that that's all it was. Yes. And that while I'm not, Amen. Not, Amen. Man, not quite ready to eat my T-bones, um, <laughs> I am feeling better. Thank God. And I thank God for such the outpouring of kindness that has been uh, given to me during this these couple days. I've got some wonderful uh, in-person and texts and emails and everything. Just wishing well. So I do appreciate everybody who stood the gap Sunday. <laughs> For doing what I usually do around here, that lets me know it can be handled. We uh, you are know, working together as a team. And what a blessing that is. Okay, now we'll have Daniel start our Bible study. Let us pray. Lord, gracious God, our Father, we got country, Lord, just to our says thank you. Thank you. Thank you for God letting us God see another day. For God waking us up this morning. For God placing a God whoop over our heads. For God placing God clothes upon our backs. For God placing God's shoes upon our feet, to Lord. Because God, when we look back at it, oh Lord, we can God knows, oh Lord, that God, God could have been us, oh Lord, on the streets, oh Lord. God could have been us, oh Lord, God, on the cold, oh Lord. But God, you have blessed us, oh Lord. You have God kept us. So as long as we God are still breathing, oh Lord, we have a reason to give you thanks. Because you are worthy to be praised, both from the rising of the sun to the going down the sand, for your steadfast faith, oh Lord, lasts forever, oh Lord. And God, your goodness, oh Lord, is this God running after me. So I just say thank you. Thank you, thank you to God. I'm a sinner, Lord. Yes. But God, yet while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Yes. So I just say thank you, thank Lord. You. And God, we got to look back at our Lord. We got to see, oh Lord, how you was wounded for our transgressions. How you was bruised for our iniquities. And the trespass when my peace was upon you, oh Lord. And through your stripes out here. And because, God, you died for me, oh Lord, I can face tomorrow, oh Lord. Yes. And because you died for me, oh Lord, all fear is gone. So I just say thank you. Thank you, Lord God, without the shining of blood, there is no emissions of sins. Thank you, Lord God, you God died for me, oh Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord. For God being God so merciful. For God being God so gracious. For God being so loving, oh Lord. For God being so kind. You have God been just so good to me. Because every time I turn around, you got to keep on blessing me. You have God been Jehovah Jireh, Lord, the God who provides. You have been our shepherd. And as long as you are a shepherd, I shall not want. So when we walk through the valley of the shadow of all death, we will not fear no <coughs> evil, but die all with us. Thou rod and thy staff comfort us, O oh Lord. So I just say thank you. Thank you. Just continue to God, let your kingdom come. And continue to let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We got to continue to God pray for Israel. If they got going through your God war, Lord, and we got to continue to God pray for the Ukraine, oh Lord. We got to continue to pray for the homeless. We got to continue to pray for those, oh Lord, who have got in the chicken shed. Yes. Because God, we know God's the song says there's power in the name of Jesus yes. to break every chain, oh Lord. Yes. And God, so I just say, God, break every chain, oh Lord. Break out every boundary, oh Lord. I see God increase, oh Lord, yes. all around me. Yes. So God, let God all the distractions go. And these my verses down to just my point. Amen. 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 Let's get the Lord a hand clap of praise because he is indeed worthy to be worshipped and worthy to be praised both from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Today is a good day because this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. We give praise to God to at least for, for at least two reasons. Number one, because the Bible says it's a good thing to do. And number two, I think I have some metropolitan witnesses here who are live online or on a conference call who know that the Lord is worthy to be praised. Come on and give God the honor. Come on and give God the praise. Because I don't know about you, but if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I simply do not know where I would be. 
because God has truly kept me in the midst of it all. And it's not just a cute ditty, trustee, watch that. God will keep you when you cannot even keep yourself. Amen. Because it was not until the 3.30 hour when I was going to my car that I noticed that my wallet was not in my particular pocket. But it was indeed still on the front seat from the restaurant that I went to at lunchtime. And God kept my wallet and made sure that nobody busted my windows, Amen. saints of God, while I was indeed on campus. Amen. And that's why I can truly say that God is good. And all the time, God is good. I ask that you open up your Bibles to the book of 3 John commencing at the ninth verse, concluding at the 15th verse. And I have already been blessed today during this particular prayer time because I was wondering what the topic and the title of tonight's teaching would be for this second part of this teaching from 3 John. We will be looking at 1 John chapter 1 on next week, especially the part where it says, that God will forgive you, saints of God, that if you confess your sins, First John chapter 1 and verse number 9, that if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all sin and unrighteousness. But we're going to look at Third John chapter 9, verses 9 through 15, saints of God, on today. And I was blessed already in the particular prayer time because my trustee, Gloria Jackson, gave me the title for tonight's message. And it's simply tuning in to God's presence. Because she prayed that indeed the young people and young adults would tune into the very presence of God. But that is something, no matter how old you are, you need to be doing because God does not deal with us according to our ages as much as he does deal with us according to stages because you can be a nine-year-old and have a more powerful relationship with the God of your salvation than a 90-year-old individual if you are truly day in and day out seeking the Lord while he can be found and calling upon him while he is near. Reading from the New King James Version of the Bible, 3 John chapter 1, because it's only one chapter, and verse number 9 says, I wrote to the church, but the Eutrophus, who loves to have the preeminence among them, does not receive us. Therefore, if I come, I will come to mind his deeds, which he does prating against us with malicious words. And not content with that, he himself does not receive the brethren. It forbids those who wish to, putting them out of the church. Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. Demetrius has a good testimony from all and from the truth itself. And we also bear witness and you know that our testimony is true. I had so many things to write, but I do not wish to write to you with pen and paper and ink, but I hope to see you shortly and we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. For the next few moments that are ours, I want to teach as the Lord shall guide tonight from the subject, tuning in to God's presence. Tuning in to God's presence. Because saints of God, 
If you recall from last week, the elder John, the evangelist John, is writing a personal letter to his beloved friend and brother Gaius, who he is truly grateful for, for his contributions in the kingdom of God. And I told you all last week that we oftentimes misquote this text from 3rd John and verse number 2 in the church. Because we speak it oftentimes as it being God's desire for all of his particular children. But this is when it says in the Bible, the word of God in verse number 2, that it is God's desire above all things that we may prosper and be in good health just as our soul prospereth, this is the words that John is relaying to his friend in a text message, a postcard, because he wants him to know that if you are going to prosper, I care about the total man. And I know that you are tied up, tangled up, and indeed wrapped up in the will of God. And I want other areas of your life to prosper as well. I want you to experience good health because if you're not healthy, you are not going to be able to consistently stir up the gift of God that I planted in you even before you were formed in your mother's womb. And I gave you a good working definition of what the word prosper means. To prosper means to travel well down the path that God has purpose and ordained for your life. Because God wants you to have a successful journey. God wants you, as the Bible, the word of God says in the book of Joshua, Joshua chapter 1 and verse number 8. To be strong, to be bold, and to be very courageous. Because those are some important attributes that you must possess if you are going to prosper as a child of God and a student of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Because to be a disciple, you must be diligent. Because we know that Hebrews 11 and verse number 6 says that God is a rewarder to those that diligently seek him. You must be about the Father's business all day and every day. Because the root word for disciple is the word discipline. And God wants us as the people of God to be dedicated and devoted to the things of God. And when you are dedicated and devoted totally to the things of God, as Gloria Jackson would tell you, trustee Gloria Jackson just prayed, you are indeed logged in and focused in on the things that God would have you to do. But saints of God, I stopped by here to let you know tonight, and I was really wondering the relevance of tonight's teaching, but it is indeed a spiritual truth and reality that not only must you be disciplined, not only must you be diligent, and not only must you be dedicated to the things of God, I would dare to say that if you want to have a prosperous journey, walking in everything that God has purposed and ordained for your life, you must more importantly also have spiritual discernment. Let the church say spiritual discernment. Spiritual discernment. Yes, God wants us all to watch the company that we keep. Because everybody 
in the body of Christ is not always on the same spiritual page as the God of our salvation. And we must be a unified body because one, the 133rd division of the song in verse number one says that unity releases the power of God. And there's so much division in the body of Christ today. And there's so much divisiveness because people do not want to follow God's kingdom agenda. They put the me, myself, and I over the will of God. And it becomes all about them. Just like this brother that John is writing about in verse number nine, Diotrophus. I don't know if I'm saying his name right or not. But it says that he wants preeminence. He wants to indeed have the spotlight on him. And that is not of God. Because God would have you to know it's not about just serving him in the times where the spotlight is on you. No, the testimony of the town, the truth of the town is that God is more into service than spotlighted times. Because Jesus himself wiped and washed his disciples' feet because he wanted us to know as the people of God, we must indeed serve him with not a haughty spirit. We must serve him with a humble spirit. Therefore, it goes without saying that we got to stay focused. Let the church say, we must stay focused. Because we know that John wrote in John chapter 10, in verse number 10, that the devil has come for no other reason but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Because he does not want to see you walking in victory and living the abundant life that God has for you in the here and now. And he will indeed use you even in the church because indeed I try to tell my sons oftentimes and I have to have a talk with one of my sons even after Bible study. Therefore, I pray that God stabs him awake with a knife of conscience. Many a times your gift will open doors for you that your character cannot keep you in. And I stop by here to let you know tonight that God wants you to be real. He's looking for somebody that who is real, who is saved, who is sanctified, and who is Holy Ghost filled. Because as we will see later on, he wants us to know, as Proverbs chapter 22 in verse number one says, there's nothing like a good name. A good name is more important than all of the world's riches. And the question that I want to pose to you tonight is, what's your character? And what's your reputation? And are you real before God 24 hours and seven days a week? We can't afford to get distracted as the people of God. Because the adversary wants us I gave you a working definition of what sin is. He wants us to veer off of the road and miss the mark of what God would have us to do in the kingdom of God. And you must know, church, if you don't get anything else in the economy of God, you can't have a Burger King mentality. You cannot have it your way. Therefore, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. 
And you got to watch the people that you keep company with. Because none of us can afford to take an alternate role and indeed want our agenda broadcasted. No, don't follow Kwame's agenda. Follow the kingdom agenda. God's will, God's way, and God's word. Because only what you do for Christ will last. So follow me as I follow Christ. Because God wants us to live righteous. And he wants us to do what is good. For he makes it very clear right here in the 11th verse, Brother Parham, of today's text. That when you do good, you personally know God. And you have seen him for yourself and you have experienced him. But if you indeed, on the other hand, do what is evil, those type of people have never laid their eyes on God. So John is letting the church know right here in verse number 11. Dear friends, don't follow his evil ways. Instead, imitate the good and righteous life. The one doing what is good belongs to God. But those who pursue evil have never laid their eyes on him. And that's why the only point that I have for us tonight is, and it's really our third point from the teaching in this particular text. And that is that we must govern our lives according to good, godly examples. Because God wants us to imitate his son, Jesus Christ. He wants us to align our attitudes and our actions up with him at all times. That's why the Bible, the word of God says in Philippians 2 and 5, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So, as I told you on the first Sunday of this brand new year, you have to be very particular about who you specifically allow in your space as a child of God and who you subsequently model your life after and allow to be your direct mentors. Because none of us can spiritually afford to allow anybody to taint our spirits and lead us down the wrong path when God has so much more for us in our next season to do for him. But in order to accomplish it, we must decrease so that the God of our salvation can increase. Oh yes, this might be a very heavy message right along here because God would have you to know that he is in fact looking for somebody who is real, who is saved, who is sanctified, and who is Holy Ghost filled. For the truth of the matter is, if you look at Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, in verse number 21, the Bible, the word of God clearly says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven. Seeing that simply calling me Lord will not be enough. For only those who do the will of my Father who is in heaven will join me in heaven. And that is why you must understand, saints of God, that it's not about your learning. It is not about your yearning. Because everybody who says, Lord, Lord, he says right here in Matthew chapter 7 and verse number 21 will be with me. But it is about your turning. 
Because Second Chronicles chapter 7 and verse number 14 says that if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and then will I heal their land. Church, did you hear what I just said? I said that we must be found faithful, doing the Father's will for our lives, 24 hours and seven days a week. If you want to, in all actuality, see the Father face to face, and you want him to say those words that all of us should desire, aim, and be our goal, where he says in the pages of sacred scripture, Thou good and thou faithful servant, Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 21. You've been faithful over a few things. I will now make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Because God wants you to know that you cannot get comfortable, content, and complacent in your Christian faith walk with God. No, in 2024, God wants to do more in and through your life. Not so that you can get a pat on your back, but he wants to use you as a demonstration of the Spirit's power. For I stop by here to let you know tonight, Metropolitan, that God is not into people faking the funk at all. Amen. No, we must be able to turn our affirmations into action because the young people would tell you that if you are going to talk about it, you must also be about it. No, you ought to desire, Metropolitan, to have a good reputation and character as a child of God. For a true child of God is committed to doing the right thing, not sometimes, but all the times. And a true child of God has truth on his or her side and comes highly recommended, not just when the cameras are on them. No, even behind the scenes. They keep so busy praising their Savior, and they keep so busy serving the Lord that they don't have time to follow other people up in their particular foolishness. I am here to let you know tonight, Metropolitan, that it ought to be all of our goals, aims, and desires that we please God with not just with the fruit of our lips, but most importantly, through our particular lifestyle each and every day of our lives so that we can directly hear him declare unto us, we've been found faithful in his estimation and in his book. In a real sense, all I'm trying to let us know Tonight, Metropolitan is. It's all about him. It's not about us in any shape, form, or fashion. You will undoubtedly hear God say these words from Matthew chapter 25 and verse number 21. Will you just go out there and serve the Lord with gladness and not seek to be in a spotlighted position? In a real sense, I'm teaching this particular Bible study to us tonight because God told me to tell you in my study, there is nothing like a good name. Because let's look at what, indeed, Proverbs chapter 22 in verse number one teaches us. In Proverbs chapter 22 in verse number one, it says that a good reputation 
is more preferable to riches. And the approval of others is better than precious silver or gold. Let me say that one more time. That a good reputation is preferable to riches. And the approval of others is better than precious silver or gold. And you may ask me, Pastor Jones, what is a reputation? What would you say a reputation is, uh, Brother Parham? What is reputation in your estimation? Reputation is something that you are known as. Exactly. Yeah. Re reputation is what people say about you. That is your reputation. And I pray that my reputation as your pastor would be the same in the sanctuary as it is on the particular street. That people would say about me that he has a passion for God and a love for God's people. Now, what do you think character is? What would you say character is, Trustee Watts? Character, how you act. Um, yeah. The way you act. The way you act. How you act. Mm -hmm. My definition of character is who you are, even when nobody is looking. That I'm not in the house of God or in the concentric circle of contact of my family of faith. Therefore, I don't have too much money in my particular pocket and I want a Kit Kat bar. So, indeed, I'm at the 7-Eleven and I slipped that into my particular pocket. Do you think that that is good character? Because character is who you are when no one is looking. And if you look at verses 9 through 12, John is comparing and contrasting the character and the reputation of Demetrius versus Diotrephus. Because God wants us to know that your respective attitude will always determine your altitude. Your attitude will always determine your altitude. Because the Bible, the Word of God, teaches us in Proverbs chapter 14 and verse number 12, that there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof is destruction, chaos, and confusion. And it is plain to see that these two brothers who had these in their name were going in two totally opposite directions. For it says in verse number 9 and 10, I wrote some things specifically to the church, but the Atrophus, who loves to be the one up front, rejects us. If I come, you can be sure that I will call him out and draw attention to his actions. He assails us with lies and deceit, as if that were not enough, he does not welcome the traveling missionaries into his home. Instead, he hinders any who do so and expels them from the church. Now, Sister Wyndham, what does that tell you about diatrophies? Is that a person that we should follow and model our lives after? Why or why not? No, no way. You know, when, when people put themselves first, they have another agenda. Uh -huh. And their agenda is not God, because God should be first. Yes. And so we want to try and um, change their hearts. 
with this with the word of God uh -huh. to, to guide them for what they should be doing and how they should be not gossiping and not being mean to other people and and that takes time to mm -hmm. change people's hearts. Mm -hmm. And this is a leader in the church, mm -hmm. and he believes and wholeheartedly exercising his authority. Because we learned on last week the importance of lifting as we climb and helping those missionaries in their missionary journeys so that we can fulfill the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 through 20, where we are supposed to go out into all the world and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit teaching them to observe everything that I have commanded unto you. And lo, I will be with you always, even until the ends of the earth. And we know that Gaius was a very generous person. But indeed, the Atrophus didn't even like to support the missionaries. Therefore, that lets you know that he wasn't about the kingdom agenda. He indeed wanted to go out there and do his own thing and do whatever he liked. And if you don't get with the program, if you don't do what I want you to do, not what God wants you to do, then you can go ahead and hit the road and he'll kick him out the church. And that is not of God. And John is letting us know and if you take that type of position, you have never even put your eyes on God. So that is why I started off tonight's Bible study by letting us know that we must stay focused in on the will of God as the people of God because we can become so easily distracted and we want to be in the in crowd but being in an in crowd will make us out with God. And I don't know about you, but I want to please God with my whole heart. I don't just talk a good game. I want to glorify God with all that is within me. So that is a bad example. But in verse number 12, we learn about this brother, Demetrius, who the Bible teaches us had what Brother Parham just gave us a good definition on, it says Demetrius has a good reputation, verse number 12, with everyone we know. The truth stands on his side, and we add our unreserved recommendation to the long list of accounts on his behalf. You can rest assured that we are telling the truth. But the truth of the matter is, there are some people, even in the body of Christ, you don't have to say amen. <laughs> you simply don't want to be around by any means, amen. even in the church, because they are just, how can I say it, too messy and do nothing but cause internal conflict and division in the church. Can I get an amen, amen. from at least amen. two people amen. in the call in line tonight? Amen. For I am indeed teaching us from the Bible and the word of God and not making any of this up this evening or this night, tonight. Seeing that the apostle Paul said, let's open our Bibles to Romans chapter 16, in verse number 17. Romans 16, in verse number 17. Hear me tonight, Metropolitan. Because the Apostle Paul wrote, I am pleading with all of you, brothers and sisters, to keep up your guard against anyone who is causing conflicts and enticing others with teachings contrary to what you have already learned. If there are people like that in your churches, 
Should you let your soul take a stroll with them? No. The Bible, the word of God, the apostle Paul says flat out in that 21st and 17th verse, stay away from them. Because they have their own particular agenda, which is contrary to the will, the way, and the word of God. Because if you are a part of a family of faith and you want unity in the body, God would have you to know that there's one voice, one vision, and one victory. Let me say that one more time. One voice, one vision, and one victory. And do you think that that voice is of Kwame Olu, Henry Jones? No, that voice is the voice of God who should be ordering our steps, who should be teaching us, guiding us, and showing us the way because the Bible, the word of God says that God's word will be a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. We can't indeed have things our way and do things in the dark and do things underhanded. Because why should we be doing things underhanded when God has already given us the upper hand and the power to prevail as the people of God. Because the Bible, the word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse number 9 that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation who God has called out of darkness into his marvelous light so that we can show forth his praise. Yes, the Bible, the word of God, suggests, Deacon Latif, that you got to stay away from the snakes, even in the house of God, because their attitudes and their actions are not in alignment and in agreement with the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself, in any shape, form, or fashion. And I declare unto you, and I declare unto you tonight that Paul wasn't ashamed to call them out and call the Atrophis to the carpet for their negative conduct in the church. Because leaders have been charged to not just go alone, to get alone. But indeed, when you see that type of attitude and cancer in the church, you got to be able to stand up in the full power, the authority, and the anointing of God and indeed nip it at the bud or the cancer can spread throughout the church and we will never indeed go beyond 100 years as a congregation. Well, one will remember. Let's go in the Bible, the word of God again. In 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse number 14. So you see that these issues that we go through in the church in the here and now, but it's even a part of the body and prevalent way back in Paul's days. For Paul says, keep your eyes out for Alexander, the coppersmith. Does your Bible say that? He came against me with all sorts of evil. And if you're operating in evilness, what did he say in the 11th verse of today's text? In the 11th verse says, if you're walking in evil ways, you have never put your eyes on God. But he says, may the Lord pay him back accordingly, because God does believe in the boomerang effect. In the economy of God, you reap what you sow. So watch your back, because he has gone overboard 
to oppose our message. Oh yes, church, I need you to hear me real good right along here. Because one of these brothers, Diotrophus, was simply downright evil and called himself a child of God and had a leadership position in the church. While the other one was not operating in evil, he was being empowered every step of the way by the Spirit's power and truly reflecting the power and the presence of his resurrected King, Jesus Christ, throughout his life. And that is how we ought to be as the people of God. We ought to reflect Christ off of us unto others. Because when they see us, they shouldn't see Daniel Michael Jones. They shouldn't see Justice Benjamin Jones or L. Don Parham. They ought to see the Jesus that is alive and at work through us because we are indeed, as the Bible teaches us in Matthew chapter 5, we are indeed letting our light so shine before men so that they can see our good works and us glorify the Father which is in heaven. Yes, Matthew chapter 5 in verse number 16. That's why I want to stop here for a second and ask you, church, you can wake up and write it down and you can go ahead and answer it tonight openly if you choose. What is your lifestyle? before the Lord. What is your lifestyle before the Lord? Are you an empowering person that people want to be around? Or do you have a different type of disposition if people stay clear from you because they know that you are not up to what God divinely desires and expects from his children? So what is your lifestyle before the Lord? Yes. Are you shedding light or lies in your daily faith walk with the Lord? For that is what indeed John is saying about this one brother. Because he says in that 10th verse, he assails us. He doesn't listen to us. He assails us with lies and deceit. As if that were not enough, he does not welcome the traveling missionaries. And when they don't agree with him, he go ahead and kick them out of the church. <laughs> you know, because he wanted to do things his particular way. I was joking with my mother. I said, we're going to indeed run our Lions t-shirts back. She said, oh, no, I indeed had enough of that. <laughs> I'm indeed getting dressed up in my Sunday's best. You can go ahead and wear a lion shirt if you want to. <laughs> and indeed, I guess I should, if I want to have my way, I should go ahead and kick her off the road. Oh, <laughs> to cut a long story short, as your pastor, I got to ask you that question that I asked you, no matter if you like it or not, because you will never grow in the things of God if you possess qualities that will subsequently stunt your spiritual growth and development. For God doesn't want us to, number one, be unteachable. We must come with the right spirit, ready to receive whatever it is that God wants to deposit into our lives. We cannot be unsubmissive. We got to be able to say like Jesus Christ in his darkest hour, nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. And we cannot afford to be uncommitted because the Bible word of God teaches us in Proverbs chapter 16 and verse number three, that when you commit your works unto the Lord, your thoughts will be established and successful. Therefore, we cannot be like the Atrophus, who was unteachable, who didn't listen to nothing that John said. He was unsubmissive. It was my way or the highway, and he wasn't committed to doing those things that God told him to do. 
Because this is indeed post-resurrection. And God has given us the charge to keep and the God to glorify. We got to share the life, the love, and the Lordship of Jesus Christ with everyone we meet. And even if we don't have the particular resources to do something in the kingdom of God, and indeed someone who is of a brother or a sister church is doing it, that we should invest in their particular ministry until we are able to step up to the plate. I gave you the example last week of how one particular church in the midst of the severe cold weather said if any churches housing these individuals and feeding them, we want to be a part of that because we don't have the building to do it, but we know that that is what God divinely desires from our lives as a church. And it's not about me. I don't do it for any recognition. No, if I get any praise, it says, let it go to Calvary because he sacrificed and suffered his life for our salvation. Yes, Diotrephus wanted to go out there and do his own thing like he was a dictator in the church and didn't embrace spiritual leadership and counsel whatsoever. And we know leaders like that. We have individuals who are running for president now who indeed didn't listen to people in his own cabinet because he wanted to do things his particular way. And it was not indeed the right way. But it's sad to say, you would think that nobody would support that type of behavior in that nature. But they are indeed backing him all of the way. Even brothers. I was so disheartened to see one of them on the TV screen last night. For, as, for we are supposed to walk consistent with the truth of God's word that we confess. Because God does not want us to be wishy-washy by any means. I didn't know it was that late in the teaching. But let me go ahead and finish it up. Metropolitan, I taught you last year. That God wants us to indeed be as James chapter 1 and verse number 22 says. God wants us to be here, not only hearers of the word, but God wants us to be doers of his word at all times. For we truly have a charge to keep and a God to glorify. Therefore, as a congregation, we must seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and know that everything else will be added unto us. Oh, I need you to grab a hold of that in the spirit tonight, Metropolitan, because an arrogant, self-promoting, and prideful attitude will destroy a church outright and its mission inside out and outside in because we have been charged to imitate a good and a righteous lifestyle, as John says right here in the text, in verse number 11. It says, Beloved, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. He who does good is of God, but he who does evil has not seen God. The text says, Diotrophus even put people out of the church, but he didn't get his way. And people disagreed with him because in his eye, sight, it was all about him. That's why God's word for somebody listening to me tonight is the in the church. In the church, we are supposed to complete God's kingdom assignment and not compete with one another. We are supposed to complete whatever it is that God has called us to do in the body of Christ and not compete against one another. Because it simply goes without saying, as the old adage goes, there's no big eyes and there's no little U's in the kingdom of God. We have to be able to get on the same page as God 
and have a testimony that we are out here serving him with gladness. And if we don't get any particular recognition, if we don't get any pats on our back, if we don't get in our thank yous, indeed, we are not doing it for the approval of man. We're doing it for our God to be glorified and lifted on high. For John chapter 13 and verse number 20 teaches us directly. When Jesus Christ said, I tell you the truth, anyone who accepts the ones I sin accepts me. In turn, the ones who accept me also accept the one who sent me. Now you can see why in verse number 10, John said he was certainly willing to call Diotrophus out and draw attention to his negative actions. John wanted you and I both to know that there is no place for lies and deceit in the body of Christ because it directly goes against the teachings of God. For how many of you in here tonight know that God wants us to stand up and be his witnesses throughout all of the earth? It's not about us. It's only about Christ because only what you do for Christ will last. Therefore, in 2024, we got to give God 100% of our worship, 100% of our service, and 100% of our dedication because God wants us to know that 99 and a half just won't do. And as a family of faith, we got to do several things together in the spirit. Number one, we got to work together in the spirit. Number two, we got to walk together in the spirit. Number three, we got to worship together in the spirit. And number four, we got to witness together in the spirit. Because no man is an island by himself. It does my heart well when individuals go the extra mile to meet people at their needs because that is what God desires. He wants us to move. He wants us to magnify and he wants us to meet people at their needs, not separately, but indeed when we come together Indeed, the power of God will be invested in whatever we do for Christ. Yes, Metropolitan, if we are going to, in fact, do even greater things in the kingdom of God in 2024 and at 13110 14th at Buena Vista, we must recognize and realize that we can't be out here trying to establish our own little kingdom. But the truth of the matter is, as the saints of old used to say way back in the day, and as I just said, there's no big eyes or no little U's. We can't just be out here talking a good game. We must be about it. For John is right in the fourth verse that the greatest joy in my life is hearing that my children are walking in the truth. And God wants to use us as demonstrations of the Spirit's power. So church, we got to be about the Father's business at all times. And we must make sure that we are governing our lives according to every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Because when we do that and when we are on the same page of God, the power of God will be made manifest in our lives, and we will truly be out there serving the Lord with gladness. We want to indeed continue. We thank God that we were able to see Sister Lofton walk in the sanctuary on Sunday in her own strength. Yes. I was able to have a good telephone call with Sister Irene Ritchie, and she sends her love and regard, and I haven't been able to catch her the last couple of times, and I've been texting her daughter-in-law, but when I saw she called the church, when I came to work on Monday, I 
called her immediately back. And indeed, she answered the phone with a strong voice. And that just lets me know that God is at work in the lives of his people. We want to continuously pray for our chairman of the trustee board that God will meet him at every need that he has. And we want him to know that it is through God that we live, we move, and we have our being. And we look forward to him walking and indeed and serving and indeed worshiping with us together in the spirit because he has a Demetrius spirit. We pray for all of those who are sick and shut in. We pray for Deacon Kansas Esther. We pray for everyone who's standing in the need of prayer. Let us look to the Lord and seek his face. Lord gracious God, our Father, we come today in the name of Jesus because we know, Lord, it is your desire, God, above all things, that we may prosper and be in good health, just as our soul prospereth. So, Lord, let us always stay focused in on whatever it is that you would have us to do. Because, Lord, we can't afford to get sidetracked and go out there and do things that are not Lord of you, God. So, Lord, I pray, Lord, that everyone in the Metropolitan Baptist Church and beyond will be spirit-led individuals, God, who will give the best of their service, God, and who will indeed let their little light so shine so that men can see their good works and them glorifying the Father which is in heaven. We thank you, Lord, for the praise reports that we have received, Lord, from individuals, God, who, Lord, have been sick, but indeed you laid your divine hands upon them and you brought healing, health, and wholeness to their bodies, God, so that they could be able to walk in complete victory. And while they indeed may have a little ways to go, we know, God, that little becomes much when we put it in the master's hands. And we thank you, God, that our lives and our plans are in your hands. So we need you to show us your face, to reign in this place, and let your kingdom come, and let your will be done. We ask, God, that you, Lord, address, Lord, every situation of members who are on our sick and shut-in list. Lord, meet them, Lord, where they are. And be the lifter of their head and the lover of their soul and let them know, God, that you are indeed thinking about them and that you can bring them out with your mighty, righteous right hand. We just want to tell you tonight that we love you, God. We worship you and adore you and that we love you more than anything. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness to the Metropolitan Baptist Church, God, and we stand in tiptoe anticipation for the celebration, but God, more importantly, Lord, we want, Lord, to fulfill your mandate of going to make more disciples, God. So continue, Lord, to show us the way, and Lord, we will walk worthy according to your will. Bless every home that is represented today, Lord, and Lord, I know that, Lord, our friend in California is standing in the need of prayer for her daughter, Pam, God. You know her particular medical condition, God. But we know, God, that, Lord, you will support her, you will sustain her, and you will strengthen her with your spirit. So touch in a mighty way. And we look forward to the praise report where, Lord, we will hear one day that this is the Lord's doing, and it is simply marvelous in our eyes. These and many other blessings we ask in your darling son, Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen and thank God. God bless you. God keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you. Amen. So we all set for the meeting on Saturday, right? At 11 or 12.